Alrighty, I haven't made a video in a while. And I'll make another video explaining why I hadn't made a video in a while. I'm actually changing up my video recording setup, but I hadn't got it fully up yet. So, anyhow, I'm doing a special request. I'm doing a special request because um, apparently there's some people that are confused with how to get the panning in their video or, or panning from their, their console. Um, this really shouldn't matter if you got an Allen & Heath console or a Mackie or a Behringer or any type of console. The concept is still the same. It's all about how everything's routed. And that's probably the most confusing because most people get lost in the output to input because basically what you're doing is you're recording through your console into your interface into your DAW and then you want to mix through your console and parse it through your DAW using plugins in the DAW maybe some outboard gear uh, through, and routing it through the console and then and then after that once you get everything mixed on the console with all your outboard gear you want to be able to print it back to a channel in the DAW so you can get here your final product. Now I'm going to show you. It's really really simple. Um, like on the Allen and Heat, there are actually four. Let me see. Direct out, main out, out buses, matrix, and stereo. Out. So there's five outputs you can use that will print back to your DAW. There's actually five outputs, but some kind. So the, what most people try to do, the most practical way to print back to your DAW is to come off this, this, the uh, main left and right. That should be your main source to go back into your interface. Some people use the main output because they're using it for speakers and actually there should be monitor outputs on your console for your speakers. It says monitor and your main left and right is actually for an output to go back into your recording source. The old system would be that the main output to come out of the console would go to a two inch tape machine. The 24 track tape machine would come into um, would come into inputs on the console and then of course what they would do is they record direct out on each channel to the, to the 24 track tape machine or they would record from the bus channels and record from the buses into the tape machine and then from there but you don't have necessarily have to do that especially we're not really using tape machines that much anymore we're using interfaces with DAWs so we're doing it so you gotta think the concept of recording for an interface in DAW is just basically the new version of a tape machine really that's really what it is so I got the Allen Heath up right now I got this instrumental track and I'm going to show you what I did and then I'm going to show you the outputs so without further ado on here I just got a two track channel right here that's coming from here so if I play this track it's coming from this track So that, that track is now coming from my interface into channels one and two here. So now, if I had it across 24 tracks, it would still all show up on all 24 tracks. So I can go ahead and insert, I can use the EQ, I can insert compressors, gates, limiters, whatever, on each channel that I want, So and I can mix, or I can insert my own EQs or whatever. But anyhow, I can get everything mixed up on the board. And then... Um, now, right now, I have just it going to the, the left and right, right? But let's say I wanted to send it to a, a bus channel, right? So, right now, I have my bus channel is muted. So, what I'm going to do is, if I want to go from the bus, I want to send this channels. 
since I only got two channels going right now, I want to sit in front of these two channels to a bus, use some gear on the bus, and then I want to print, right? Okay, we can do that. So all you have to do basically is just take it off a of stereo. And of course, if I play the track, now that it's come off the stereo, you know, it had nothing to play, right? Except for the, uh, the effect I got going. So nothing's really coming out of the channel until I'm assigned it to buses one and two. Okay. Now let's assign the buses one and two here. So now I'm gonna turn up, unmute buses one and two, bring those, bring those up, and now we'll hear sound. All right, we got sound. Right? And so now I got sound. So now, um, let's say I want to print from my bus channels, but naturally, to get it out of my bus channel, and I want to go from my bus channel directly into my interface, I'm going to come out the back. You see these, see these, these XLR, these XLR jacks on the back. Those were where you would sit out. So basically, tracks, uh, buses one and two. You can come out groups one and two. You're going to run a cable from groups one and two, and that's going to come out into your interface. All right. So. Uh, once you get into your interface, so now, if I play this track, if I play this track, right now, if I just go to left channel, that's my print track right here. This track 14 right here, this is in Cakewalk, but in Cakewalk, track 14 is going to be my master print track. So I have it armed. So when I play this track, it's going to capture that, right? And watch as I, if I only want, I have the left channel pan hard left and the right hand pan hard right. So if I just want to capture, if I play and I just only want to catch the left, I bring, as you can see here, so depending on which volume, how much I want to volume how much volume I want to give on each channel based on what I'm doing with the levels here on the faders that's what's going to give the level into the DAW it's the same thing right well, that's, and let's say I got the volume level set I'm playing this track and I can sweep we're using the pan as well the pans <laughs> And so, whatever, how I got my channels affected here, and the pan on the channel is going to affect the output coming out of here. So all I have to do, all I have to do is run the output from uh, whatever I got signed on my channels. If I want to sign it to a bus instead of sending it to the main left and right, I sign it to a bus. It now goes to this group bus, groups one and two, which is auxiliaries, which is a bus groups one and two, bus one and two, or group one and two, whatever you want to call it. That is now going from to the group and then to my master out. I have mine coming from the stereo output to the DAW, but you can run directly from the auxiliary itself. It'll do the same thing. Um, if I if I grab a light here. 
Uh, let me see if I got a... Yeah. And I'll plug up an auxiliary instead of coming from these stereo. Because this is my stereo right here. That's my print coming out of the console going into my outer interface coming from the stereo output. But I can also run groups one and two output. So I'm going to... What I'm going to do is... Right here, you see, it says groups, groups one and two. You can barely see because the light is bright. That's groups one and two. So what I'm going to do, so you can say, let's say you want to run your master from your, so I'm going to unplug this. And I, I'm going to plug this into groups here. And I'm going to take the second one, and I'm going to plug into one and two. Okay. Now that's plugged into groups one and two. Now that's going to go out of that bus group into my interface because this is going for the output into my interface. I'm not going to show you how to plug it in here because if you don't know have to plug your interface. I, I I can't help you there. But um, now. That's coming from the, out of the console, out of the groups, outputs one and two from my bus, one and two into my DW. So if I hit play, I still get the same thing, right? So, look. So now I have a stale track output coming from, so now based on the volume levels here on my groups and how I got my left and right set up here for my pan, my output for my group. So I can sign all channels that I wanted to go to groups one and two, all my, or buses one and two. So if I got all 24 tracks, if I had 24 tracks of signal coming from the console, I can assign all those to buses one and two, and they will now route to bus one and two. The output of bus one and two will now go into my interface to, for me to print a mix. And if I want to, because all my channels and stuff are hooked up through my patch bay, this is my patch, my patch bay is over here. So if I want to hook up all my, if I want to hook up a compressor, a gate, uh, whatever the case, an EQ, you know, something like one of these uh, processing units. I want to plug that onto a bus, and I want to run a chain. I can run a chain. I can run. I can from that bus. I can run the bus output, and these are my those those pass me down there are my buses. If I want to run an output, and I want to chain into a EQ or a chain into a compressor and into an EQ, and then the EQ finally goes in back into the bus channel. I can do that. It'll come back into these two groups, these group buses here. Then I can print. All I got to do is put an insert um, because my inserts are already coming from my bus channels into my patch bay. I just connected through my patch bay. But if you don't have a patch bay set up, you, just, you would do that. You just run an insert. Hope you got a patch bay if you're going to try to chain gear together, signal chain gear together. But you run that, run the, the signal you know, from your output to your SIN insert on your bus and then once you run an insert on your bus whatever your gear you want to chain that'll go out to the gear and then return back into the channel for you to, to use whatever gear and then you're ready to print from those two outputs that I just hooked up on the on the bus channel like I said normally I run a stereo output or the master output excuse me so that way I can print into my DAW the final mix So, <clears throat> so that's going to do it for the video. I hope that kind of cleared, uh, clarified. Sometimes people want to run, like for me, 
there are direct outs on each channel. There are direct outs, but I don't like to use direct outs for printing back for final mix. I don't use direct outs for recording on each channel. I use direct outs for that. If I'm going to record something for that channel to record. But if I'm going to re to mix to the console and then I'm going to do a final mix, I like to mix from the master output section, which is your buses and your, mat your left and right. So that's where I like to print from. That way, um, and another video, because this is Alan Heath, um, because it can be confused because a lot of people, well, I got a matrix. Well, how do I use the matrix? Or I got auxiliaries, or I got the main master left and right and all that. Uh, because these consoles are really more live consoles than they are recording consoles, even though you can use them as recording consoles. It gets a little bit trickier versus a console, which actually would have dedicated monitor outs. Um, this is up just a little different uh, on live consoles, but uh, that's how I would print. Um, I run a stereo output. The stereo output, I can run through all my buses, groups one, buses one through eight, and then I all come to the master left and right, which then comes out. I can still hear the, through the speakers, but also the stereo left and right lets me hear, but it also prints into the DW as you saw. And you all you gotta do is adjust your level, your pans, and everything else to get how you're gonna get your mix. And that's pretty much it. Other than that, that's gonna do it. Thanks for watching, and y'all have a great one.